Hello everyone, today I want to show you the user configuration portal for WebEx. This is where you as an end user would go if you wanted to tweak some of the settings in your own WebEx account. You can actually schedule meetings from here, you can start meetings in real time from here using your personal meeting room, and you can see some statistics about your own WebEx usage from this portal. To get to it, you simply go to the domain name that your administrator has provisioned. For instance, it might be something like domain.webex.com. It'll be in that format. You'll log in with the credentials that you've been provided, and from there you'll land right at the page and you'll be able to start checking into those settings that you have provisioned. Let's check it out. Here you can see my personal landing page. There's a couple things to point out. First is my personal meeting room address. From here you can also see your upcoming meetings at the bottom of the screen. You have the schedule a meeting button here to the right hand side and you can join a meeting from here as well uh, if you would like. Down the left hand side there are some additional tabs. If we click the meetings tab it will take us to our list of upcoming meetings. Again I can schedule a meeting here if I'd like. Let's go ahead and open that. When you Come into this, you have the meeting topic you can enter. There'll be an, automatic, uh, an automatically generated meeting password. You can put the attendees by email address. You can then put an agenda, some notes about the meeting, so on and so forth. If you wanted to have the meeting be a recurring meeting, you can do that here as well. You can set the meeting to be recorded automatically. There, are, there is actually a, another way to schedule a meeting, and that is using a plugin in Outlook. There's a number of reasons why you would want to do that. We'll talk about that in a different video to give you a first-hand look at that. But always know that this option is here if for some reason you're not in front of your typical computer. Speaking of those recordings, we can click the Recordings tab, and we'll be brought to our list of recordings. Here you can see I did a demonstration of a Sales Connect bot in WebEx Teams. It's been recorded. I have the ability to uh, come over here and share this recording. I can edit it, change its title, and change the permissions. Or if I'd like to delete it and get rid of it, I can do that here as well. If I have deleted recordings, I can access them for up to, I believe, 30 days in the Deleted Items tab. Preferences is the next tab. There are a number of settings in here. There is scheduling preferences. You can set how long before the host that individuals are permitted to join a meeting. So say if I'm hosting a meeting and I want to um, you know, have that meeting start at noon, I can have people join that meeting at 11.55 so that they're ahead of time uh, and can you know, begin discussing and so on and so forth. Again, this is just for scheduled meetings, not necessarily your personal meeting room meetings. There's an email reminder that uh, can be sent out. You can have attendees copied uh, or have a copy of this sent to the meeting uh, creator whenever a meeting is scheduled through the web interface. You can automatically have the recording of the meeting sent out to participants as well if you hit this share recording button. You can also you know, apply some restrictions to who can join your WebEx. So if it's someone uh, you want the only people who can join to be people inside your organization or people with a WebEx account. You can do that as well. Uh, also, you can restrict the meeting to invite attendees only if you want to prevent the meeting from being forwarded uh, and distributed any further than what you specifically intend it to be distributed. And the audio and video tab gives us some additional settings. We can choose if we want our meeting invite to have toll-free dial-in numbers, if we wanted to use WebEx audio or use voice over IP only. Voice over IP is when you use your computer as the microphone and speakers for the audio, uh, as opposed to perhaps you know joining on your computer uh, or PC and then having the meeting call you on a landline or cellular phone. Typically, I leave this to WebEx audio assuming your organization has it enabled. You can have a tone set. Typically I leave this to no tone to prevent interruptions. Come back to personal room. General is just the most general settings, language and region uh, and time zone. Time zone of course is very important because you're scheduling 
is going to be linked to that. Last but not least, we want to look at my personal room. You can customize the name of your personal room. In this case, I just have it Adam's personal room because it is my personal space for meetings in the cloud when I need that ad hoc meeting space. You have the personal room link. This is again that vanity URL that we use. The host pin. This is the pin that I use if I dial into my personal room from a video endpoint or from you know some uh, system like that. I dial in this SIP, the SIP URI for this meeting room and I can type that pin and be launched in and it knows that I'm in fact the host. This isn't really my pin, so don't even try it. Uh, notifications. If someone's waiting to join my personal room and I have not yet joined, I can actually have this box enabled and I'll get a notification via email that someone is in fact waiting and I can admit them into the space. I can actually configure alternate hosts for my room. So if I have a physical office, it's like giving someone else the key so that they can come in and have a meeting there without broadcasting and just leaving the door unlocked all the time. I can specifically name them by email address in the box below. You can also just kind of do a blanket rule that says anyone with a host account on this site, meaning anyone in my organization who has a WebEx Meetings host account can actually start my personal meeting room as well. There's a couple places where this is useful. I actually have another video that talks about this if you want to understand this in more depth. If you make any changes, hit the Save button and, these, and the uh, settings will be committed and you're good to go. Next, I want to talk about the Insights tab. Go ahead and click that tab and you'll see some basic statistics that show your meeting usage over the past X number of weeks. In this case, I have 12 weeks. I can even go back to six months and see my statistical you know, usage, scroll through, see the total you know, time I spend in meetings, the total number of meetings, and so on and so forth. You know, This is per month. If you prune it back to a shorter period of time, of course, you'll get the you know, day by day, week by week look at, at meeting statistics as well. There's a support tab, and last but not least, a download link. This download link is actually where you'll go to get the WebEx plugin for Outlook uh, on your computer. It, it, there's also some other features that are built into it that allow you to do some proximity connectivity, which I'm going to highlight in a little bit. Uh, a lot of times your administrator will have this pre-installed, so you may or may not have to worry about this, but just be aware that you can get that here. Another thing to point out is that there is a WebEx mobile application. It makes mention of that for the Apple uh, App Store as well as Google Play. These you can actually access, uh, these downloads you can access via those two app stores. So if you want to use WebEx on your mobile phone, go out to those appropriate app stores, look, search for WebEx, download the app, log in with your company's credentials, and away you go.